Getting married and raising a family brings a great deal of responsibility. And as parents and partners, couples need to take on the roles of both and lead by example. However, this is in stark contrast to the selfish and callous actions of the man we're going to discuss today. His actions spoke for themselves. He was a man without a moral compass, capable of doing anything to get what he wanted. Today's case is about a man whose ruthless nature was masked by a polished veneer, leading many to believe that he was a reliable father and husband. Let's dive into today's story, the case of Dr. Iwao Nomoto. On November 3, 1994, in the Japanese port city of Yokohama, 20 miles south of Tokyo, a mysterious white plastic bag was discovered floating in the harbor. It was a large bag and its contents looked to be heavy, its appearance resembling a sack of rice. It had been tied to a large rock to weigh it down in the water. The sighting was reported by nearby residents and the Japanese Coast Guard soon arrived. To the horror of the officers, the body of a dead woman was discovered inside the plastic bag. This gruesome discovery at the once peaceful harbor would be followed by even more horrendous findings in the days to come. Over the next eight days, divers found two more plastic bags in the same harbor. Inside, they found the remains of two small children, both believed to be under two years old. Three bodies were all found in a plastic bag at the same location. It was clear that they were all linked to the same suspect or suspects. The first body that was discovered belonged to a 31-year-old woman named Eiko, a resident of Tsukuba, a city 30 miles north of Tokyo. The other two remains belonged to Eiko's two-year-old daughter and her infant son. The prime suspect was obvious from the start. A few days prior to the discovery of Eiko's body, her husband had filed a missing persons report for Eiko and the couple's two children. The husband and father of the deceased was 29-year-old Dr. Iwao Nomoto. He appeared to be in shock after hearing the news of the discovery at the harbor. As the next of kin, he was called in as a witness by the police at first. He sat in the interrogation room and gave his testimony on the last day that he saw his family alive. During the interview, however, something on Dr. Nomoto's wrist caught the attention of police investigators. There were a number of small cuts and abrasions on his wrist, and the wounds appeared to be relatively fresh, having only healed partially. So as not to alarm a possible suspect, the investigators casually asked Dr. Nomoto about his injuries, to which he replied that the scratches had come from a dog. The investigators were immediately suspicious, but they had no evidence to prove that Dr. Nomoto had murdered his entire family. The news of this triple homicide topped newspaper and TV headlines across Japan. The gruesome nature of this discovery of a mother and her two children found lifeless in a plastic bag at sea left the nation in shock. During this time, however, the details of Eiko's private life started emerging to the surface. Rumors circulated that Eiko had worked in the nightlife industry and had an expensive taste for luxury goods. Coupled with the fact that the family was struggling financially, public opinion of Eiko began shifting to that of a bad wife and mother. Further details of her private life were unveiled in the following days, after investigators found a diary while sorting through her personal belongings. Her journal entries revealed Eiko's troubled marriage with her husband, Dr. Nomoto. Investigators soon realized that their fractured marriage was a result of Dr. Nomoto's infidelity, which gave him a powerful motive to murder his wife and two children. Based on their findings from the diary, the police summoned Dr. Nomoto once again, this time as a suspect. 
Dr. Nomoto dismissed all suspicion surrounding him, but his denial didn't hold up for long. CCTV footage near where the bodies were found picked up a vehicle with number plates belonging to Dr. Nomoto, and he promptly relented by confessing to his crime. This came on November 25th, three weeks after the first body was discovered. Iwao Nomoto grew up in the countryside of Ibaraki Prefecture, where he was an excellent student at school. He was accepted into medical school with ease and made his family proud by becoming a doctor. He first met Eiko at a local tennis club in 1990. At the time, Iwao was a 25-year-old hospital intern and Eiko a 27-year-old nurse. At the time, Iwao was already in a relationship with another woman, but he fell head over heels for Eiko, and before long, they had moved in together. It was then that Eiko became pregnant, and even up to that point, Iwao had been seeing the other woman he'd been dating prior to Eiko. He was forced to end that relationship to choose marriage with Eiko due to her expecting baby. Later, Iwao was hired to work at a large hospital for an annual salary of around $150,000. Despite his income, Iwao was in reality struggling to pay off his debt on a monthly basis due to a string of unwise investments. He had purchased three apartment properties in the Kobe and Osaka area and was making huge interest payments to pay off the mortgages. Eiko became aware of Iwao's circumstances and decided to work through the challenge as a couple, getting an extra job and taking care of her children at the same time. She worked as a nursing assistant in the daytime and moonlighted as a karaoke hostess at night. It was a difficult task, but Eiko felt she had no other choice to make her husband and her baby happy. But one day, her world came crashing down after she discovered the true reason behind her husband's debt issues. Infidelity, once again, was at the root of Iwao's money problems. He'd had complicated relationships with other women before marrying Eiko. Eiko discovered that Iwao had been cheating on her with many nurses from the hospital he worked at, even after starting a family together with Eiko. He had even given one of the nurses the keys to his dormitory, where they would have a secret rendezvous. Even the apartments that Iwao had bought were, in fact, a gift for one of his mistresses. Eiko became distraught and grief-stricken by the discovery, realizing that all of her sacrifices had been for naught. Understandably, she also became furious, and this is when tension started mounting between the couple. After much deliberation, Eiko asked Iwao for a divorce, demanding a settlement of $1 million and monthly child support of $10,000. Iwao begged her to reconsider, promising that he would never cheat on her again, and Eiko gave him a chance. Despite all his promises, though, Iwao never changed. After the birth of their second child, Iwao continued to cheat on her. Eiko, not wanting to get a divorce, offered very generous terms to Iwao, allowing him to see other women only if he promised not to spend nights away from home, reserve weekends for the family, and love her equally as he did the other woman. But even this wasn't enough for Iwao. He continued to cheat on her brazenly, and Eiko's patience was starting to run out. She decided to no longer help Iwao pay back his debts. She began spending the money she earned only on her children and buying luxury goods for herself. According to Dr. Nomoto's confession, Eiko and her children were murdered on the same day on October 29th. The couple had been fighting once again over his infidelity at 5 a.m. that morning, and in the heat of the moment, Eiko went to the kitchen to grab a knife and put a length of rope around her neck. She'd had enough of Iwao's affairs with other women and threatened to kill herself. 
With her final words, a furious Eiko told Iwao that she would make sure that everyone at his hospital knew about his infidelity. At that moment, Iwao became fearful that his medical career could be jeopardized if Eiko were to follow through on her threats. He could not let that happen. As if by instinct, he put his hand on the rope around Eiko's neck and pulled as hard as he could. A frightened Eiko began to resist, but Iwao put his other hand over her nose and mouth to suffocate her. Moments later, Eiko went limp as her life left her body. An eerie silence fell over the family home. It was 5.30 a.m. and their children would be waking up soon. According to Dr. Nomoto's confession, he came to the conclusion that his children would never be happy knowing that their father was a murderer. With this in mind, he went to their rooms and did the unspeakable. Both children had their lives taken from them at the hands of their own father. Dr. Nomoto still showed up for work as usual at his hospital. He spent the workday thinking about the best way to dispose of their remains. He decided to dump them at sea, tied to a rock, to weigh them down. After coming home that day, he placed the bodies in large plastic bags and stuffed them in the trunk of his car. Dr. Nomoto started his vehicle, but he didn't head straight to the ocean to dump the bodies. Perhaps he felt the need to relieve some tension. Dr. Nomoto decided to enjoy a night out, stopping by a strip club and a brothel in the process. All this time, the dead bodies of his wife and two children were sitting in his trunk. After that, Dr. Nomoto drove around aimlessly before finally bringing his vehicle to a stop next to the ocean, dumped the bodies in the water, and returned home. Dr. Nomoto continued to behave like a man without guilt or remorse, visiting a travel agency the next morning to plan a vacation to Hokkaido with one of her mistresses. At the same time, he called the police and filed a missing persons report for his wife and two children. He was certain that the remains of his family would be lost at sea and never be found again. Dr. Nomoto's confidence, however, was sorely misplaced. Just a few days later, the bodies were discovered, and Eiko's diary as well as CCTV footage of his vehicle foiled what he thought was a perfect crime. Dr. Nomoto's confession and the circumstances surrounding his actions make this a clear-cut case of a premeditated murder. During the course of his trial, however, Dr. Nomoto would claim that his actions were spontaneous and had occurred in the heat of the moment. A closer inspection of his case revealed several more mysteries. An autopsy of his younger infant son identified a piece of solid chocolate still in his stomach. Solid chocolate melts very quickly when exposed to temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius. In a human stomach, it only takes about an hour for chocolate to be fully digested. The fact that a solid piece of unmelted and undigested piece of chocolate was found in his stomach indicates that Dr. Nomoto's infant son had only eaten it within an hour of him being killed. Let's once again go over the timeline of the murders. According to Dr. Nomoto's confession, he killed his wife at 5.30 a.m. and immediately moved on to do the same to his children. This would indicate that his children had eaten the chocolate sometime between 4.30 and 5.30 a.m., which didn't sound right to the investigators. Further doubt was cast on Dr. Nomoto's story following the testimony of Eiko's acquaintance who had visited their home the day before. This was the evening of October 28th, and Eiko's friend recalled seeing her infant son eating chocolate at around 7.30 p.m. She also remembered the exact time that she left Eiko's home 30 minutes later at 8 p.m. 
On the way out, she also ran into Eiko's husband, Dr. Nomoto, who was just returning from work. Based on this testimony, the murders may have in fact taken place between 8 p.m. when Dr. Nomoto came home and 8.30 p.m. when his infant son would have fully digested the chocolate he had eaten an hour earlier. This would mean that Dr. Nomoto murdered his family immediately after coming home from work on October 28th, rather than early the next morning. How does a man spontaneously murder his entire family within just a 30 minute time window? Rather, it suggests that Dr. Nomoto may have planned this in advance before coming home that day. The plastic bags used by Dr. Nomoto to dump the bodies presented yet another mystery. One would assume that all three would have been tied using the same knot, but one of them was clearly different from the rest. Two of the bags were tied using an ordinary knot familiar to most people, but a little known and rarely used type of knot was seen on the third bag. The knot goes by the name Tawara Musubi and is used by Japanese farmers to tie large sacks of grain. If you recall, Dr. Nomoto grew up in the countryside, so it was natural to assume that he knew how to tie these knots. The problem was that Tawara Musubi had grown out of favor among young people in the countryside and was almost exclusively used by the most elderly of farmers. This was confirmed by a survey conducted in Dr. Nomoto's hometown where not a single young farmer knew how to tie the Tawara Musubi knot. In addition, Dr. Nomoto spent most of his time studying in school with dreams of becoming a doctor and was unfamiliar with farm work. In addition, Dr. Nomoto only used a regular knot to tie the plastic bags at a later crime scene reenactment. Strange isn't it? This raised the possibility that Dr. Nomoto might have had an accomplice who helped him dispose of the bodies, a suspicion that led to heated exchanges in court between both sides. A possible accomplice would only solidify the case as one of premeditated murder. This was a key determining factor in the court sentencing, but it was difficult to prove that Dr. Nomoto had an accomplice and no further evidence was found indicating as such. Dr. Nomoto ultimately went to court as the lone defendant and this mystery would be left unresolved. The trial began and the prosecutors asked for the death penalty. However, the court ruled that the killings were not premeditated and sentenced Dr. Nomoto to life in prison instead. There were other factors in play that may have influenced the judge's ruling. One of them was the collection of favorable testimony from Dr. Nomoto's friends, colleagues, and patients at the hospital. They all spoke highly of Dr. Nomoto, saying he had been a kind and gentle person to them. The court even received around 3,000 petitions from people demanding that Dr. Nomoto be shown leniency and a lighter sentence. Dr. Nomoto appealed the ruling, and his case was passed on to the Tokyo High Court, which upheld his life sentence on January 30th, 1997. The file was closed on Dr. Nomoto, and the official case report described a man who had lost control of his actions and killed his wife and two children in the heat of the moment. But is that really the truth? After all, this is a man who was stowing the bodies of his murdered family in the trunk of his vehicle as he drove around and visited several nightlife venues. Remember, this is a man who dumped the remains of his family and planned to go on vacation with his mistress the very next day. Are these the actions of someone who killed his wife and children only by mistake? There are still many unsolved mysteries surrounding the case, most notably the complicated knot that Dr. Nomoto could not tie. A woman who sacrificed everything for the welfare of her family. 
a toddler, and an infant whose father meant everything in the world. Dr. Nomoto has betrayed the trust and expectations that come with being a father. It's clear that he was nothing but a deplorable monster who should not be allowed to walk among us. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.